<laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're doing all right. It's lovely to see you. And I hope you enjoyed the new introduction music. Uh, that is big for us. Uh, or not the music, the video. Um, I think, as uh, Rachel said in the comments, uh, we'd probably have a riot on our hands if we changed the music. So uh, it's an absolute pleasure. Thank you for taking the time. If you haven't already, uh, do drop in the chat feature where you're watching from. Um, and if you haven't already, while you're in the chat feature, don't forget to switch your messages to everyone so everyone can see your messages uh, rather than just hosts and panelists. So if it says hosts and panelists in your chat feature right now, make sure to swap that over to everyone. Uh, today, I'm absolutely thrilled to little tiny bits uh, to be sharing your screen with three lovely, lovely people who have my absolute respect and admiration. Um, this chat feature is wild. Uh, I'm trying to keep up, but hello, everyone. Thank you all so much for being here. Uh, we have Vicky Ross from Vicky Ross Writes, Dave Harland from Wordman, and Eddie Schleiner of Very Good Copy. Uh, as my grandma would say, three very good eggs. As Dave's mum would say, copywriting royalty. Uh, not to overstate the, uh, the, the, the plaudits from Angela. Um, a couple of small bits of logistics before uh, we get going on today's session. Uh, the first is that today is just uh, an interview Q&A style format. Uh, so if you have questions, drop them in the Q&A feature that's found down the bottom of your toolbars uh, in Zoom or in your app if you're watching on, on your mobile. Um, we'll take your questions sort of like towards the second half. But if you see a question that you like, make sure to give it a thumbs up. That means that I'll prioritize that in the Q&A feature, uh, the Q&A time. The other thing to say is a big thank you to our sponsors. So this week's featured sponsor is a company called Storyblock, who are a next generation CMS. And the reason why I like them is that they make me think about CMSs differently. Instead of having like my CMS as a default decision when I go to start a website, I'm thinking, huh, maybe there's another option. Maybe there's something different here. Maybe there's something better than the default of what most of us would gravitate to when starting new websites. Uh, to prove all the points in a far more eloquent way than I could, then they've just released a case study from their work with Paul Smith, um, the, the brand. And so if you want to find out about how a CMS decision can impact your business, check out Storyblock. Also, a big thank you to Braze, Exclaimer, uh, Clavio, Cambridge Marketing College, Redgate, and uh, indeed Storyblock. Uh, they're all endlessly appreciated and mean that we can bring these sessions to you. Uh, with Rhiannon in Leeds, uh, Reed in New York, uh, Alex in Gibraltar, uh, Zoe in Wimbledon, uh, Alexandra in Warsaw, uh, and so many more. Thank you all so much for being here. Uh, let's get going with today's session with the first question directed at Mr. Harland, which is, uh, what's your favorite piece of copy and why? Wow, what a question. Um, nobody will know this piece of copy. This is quite selfish to me, um, but I also think it's a a, a nice little story. Uh, well, I say nobody. If you lived in Birkenhead as a kid like I did, then you'll know it. Um, because I always remember on the main bus route to town, to the town centre from where I lived in a little village called Clawton, um, there'd been this independent little carpet shop um, for years. It had been there called Taffy's. Then all of a sudden, a load of derelict houses on the other side of the street got ripped down and then this big massive new carpet world shop got built literally over the road and it was the size of like a supermarket it was it was hideous um but luckily this carpet shop it was at the end of a terrace so within weeks of the big new carpet world opening they stuck a billboard on the side of their their end terrace and the headline messaging in like 3000 point type <laughs> was wealth warning crossing the road could seriously damage your wealth and like as a kid that was the best thing ever and i like i didn't know what copyright was till i was like 25 still don't really um but at the time it was like oh that's amazing because even then i knew they're picking a fight with the big horrible big boys over the road and they're having that kind of underdog scrappy mentality which i love now um Looking back, they were also positioning really, really cunningly on price. They were positioning against them, saying, we're cheaper than them. Don't go over there and spend the bomb. Um, and lastly, which is key for what I do now, they did it in a way that made me smile. So it stuck in my mind. And here I am, you know, 30-odd years ago talking about it still. So <laughs> for me, yeah, 
Safi's carpets on the billboard. That's incredible. Well, we've got Joy in the chat saying, I remember that sign too. So <laughs> you are not the only one here, Dave. Uh, uh, love, but, love it. I love that. And I love that you also picked out the uh, the elements that made it special there as well. So that's that's wicked. Um, Eddie, um, you came up on my screen, so, so I, yes. I'll, I'll pick on you next. Yeah, so... <clears throat> So thanks for having us, by the way. Um, it's a real honor. And I appreciate you telling us what the the, the question was ahead of time <laughs> um, so that I could prepare an example. Um, but I think I knew immediately what I wanted to share because it has like, just has a lot to do with where I'm at personally. So it's just kind of top of mind. Like I just had my daughter, Sophia, a couple of weeks ago and then our first kid, Bo. You know, he he just turned two. So it's just it, it's really interesting, by the way, because I think back when he was Sophia's age, I didn't really understand like what I had, if that makes sense. Like, uh, you know, like when he was in my arms, I knew I was holding something um, I, like I knew I was holding something priceless, but I couldn't like forecast and I guess like wrap my mind around what he was going to mean to me as time went on. Like, I just couldn't grasp like the enormity of fatherhood, like the bond it creates, like the love it creates, like those extreme emotions. It was just really hard to, I think, um, like conceptualize, I guess, without like actually living it. And, and now after, uh, after like a couple of years of like nurturing that bond and building that love, like it's, it's completely overwhelming. And, um, like every day it's getting more intense, you know, and like all the little things he does, like all the milestones, like all the first, they feel very profound to me. And, um, and I've been told that it works both ways too. Like the, like the little things I do, like all the small, uh, typical things I do or don't do for that matter, like will eventually in hindsight feel profound to, to my kids. And so like this ad just kind of captures that feeling, I think. And and that's why it resonates so much with me. It's the it's everybody knows it. Like they, nobody knew Dave's ad. One person did. Like everybody, I'm sure, has heard or seen this ad. Uh, it's the Shiva's uh, uh, Regal Father's Day ad by David Abbott. And I have it in this book here, just for context. Like this is what it looks like. We've got the art on this side and the copy on this side. And that's what it would look like in a magazine. If, if you came across it, you know, you just flip to the page and it would be across two pages. And I'll read it for you here. It says, <clears throat> um, because I've known you all my life, because a red rudge bicycle once made me the happiest boy on the street, because you let me play cricket on the lawn, because you used to dance in the kitchen with a tea towel around your waist, because your checkbook was always busy on my behalf because our house was always full of books and laughter because of countless Saturday mornings, you gave up watching a small boy play rugby because you never expected too much of me or let me get away with too little because of all the nights you sat working at your desk while I sleep, lay sleeping in bed because you never embarrassed me by talking about the birds and the bees because I know there's a faded newspaper clipping in your wallet about my scholarship because you always made me polish the heels of my shoes as brightly as the toes because you remember my birthday 38 times out of 38, because you still hug me when we meet, because you still buy my mom flowers, because you've made, you've more than your fair share of gray hairs and I know who will put them there, because you're a marvelous grandfather, because you made my wife feel one of the family, because you wanted to go to McDonald's the last time I bought you lunch, because you've always been there when I've needed you, because you let me make my own mistakes and never once said I told you so, because you still pretend you only need glasses for reading because I don't say thank you as often as I should because it's Father's Day. Because if you don't deserve Shiva's Regal, who does? So <clears throat> obviously a very emotional ad. It like, always chokes me up, I think, especially lately, uh, you know, with all these kids running around. And it's just like, it's just this, it's just this stupid thing. You know what I mean? Like, it's just a stupid ad he wrote to sell stupid whiskey but it's not like at the end of the day, it's not, it's, it's, uh, um, it's his reality and it's his truth and like his lived experience. And we all get it because we're all the same, you know, like the human condition is constant. And I think it's, it's poignant for me as I'm sure it is for many other people, because there's layers to it, you know, like I read it and part of me thinks about, 
like my own dad and how uh, like I'm not close to him and how our relationship is uh, um, like fractured and broken in many ways and how I read this copy and I can't really um, like relate to it as a son. And that's very painful. But as a father, you know, I thinking about my own kids, it's aspirational. And I think like, geez, like if, if I got to know like that from Bo or from my daughter, like it would just be the happiest moment, you know, like the most incredible thing, just knowing that, um, you know, your kids feel that way about you, you know? And so these thoughts I'm having, these connections I'm making between an ad about whiskey and my own life and the most important people in my life is just testament to the fact that writing great copy, um, no matter what you're selling, very often boils down to how well you can illustrate a moment, how well you can show that moment, that slice of life. And if you can remind people of that moment and generate a feeling that way and connect uh, you know, that feeling to a product, that's how you compel people and that's how you sell people on things. And and David Abbott does this masterfully in this ad. It 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 really is a masterclass in show don't tell writing. And that's why it's so powerful and so emotional, I think, because it's vivid. You can see it. You know, the ad doesn't just give you a message. It, it like makes you visualize, um, makes you visualize scene after scene after scene, you know? So it's not because you were silly and funny. It's, you know, because, you know, you used to dance in, in the kitchen, you know, with a towel around your waist or whatever it said. And then like, you know, it's not because you were a great provider. It's because, you know, all the nights you sat working at your desk while I lay sleeping in bed. You know, it's not because you were proud of me. It's because I know there's a faded newspaper clipping in your wallet about my scholarship, right? Not because you're affectionate. It's because you still hug me when we meet, right? Not because you're a great husband. It's because you still buy my mom flowers. You know, these are all very, very like typical moments expressed using simple uh, common words. And the result is this kind of mental movie that we can't help but but see and feel and and uh, and relate to. So that's my favorite. Love that, mate. Thank you so much. Like, I, 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 you know, it's almost hard to follow that. Um, but like, bang on. I really appreciate you, you sharing that. And and like, again, in in a similar way, and, and not to belittle anything else that you've said, as if it's less important than than everything else you shared. I think what we spoke to, from a copywriting perspective, like, and again, uh, the rest is way more important. Um, is that emotional connection? Uh, and and giving it space for folks to be able to relate to something and be able to feel it, to be able to resonate. And, you know, the fact that that's stuck with you for all this time to come back to it and sort of say, this is the thing, you know, it, it speaks to the power. And and uh, there was a comment here in the, in the chat from Alex who just said, yep, love this ad, dot, dot, dot. There's uh, some more words, but it said, man, words are good. You know, words are cool, <laughs> you know, and, and they can do these things to us as people and, and they're so powerful. So thank you for sharing that because it was just such a, you know, what's striking is that it's almost two opposites. You know, we've got, we've got Dave on one side who's like funny, punching up, you know, like all that. And then we've got, you know, an emotional reaction. And like, that's the, that's the spectrum that we've got available to us when we, when we play with these things. So, so thank you. Um, Vicky, I'll, I'll pass over to you. Um, I appreciate that's a hard act to follow, but um, when, when we asked, when we came in with the, um, some examples then then what was the one that came to your mind uh that is such a hard act to follow eddie i will get you for this <laughs> <laughs> um sorry you just said someone said in the chat words are good words are good and now i've got to think of some good ones to say um i pretty much like every line because i just love it that a copywriter gets to write something and see it go live like it's so exciting to have your work go out there so um I'm always really appreciative of the achievement and of the job that we have as copywriters because it's the best job I think um before I say my line that I like uh Eddie was reading from the DNAD copy book which I highly recommend everyone gets for some inspiration um so you did ask the question in advance, which is good because I can never think of an answer to this question on the spot. And um, also I can't count and I'm rubbish with rules. So I thought of lots of different ones. So I'm just going to go with the one that is on my mind right now. Um, and that is Legos Rebuild the World. It's their brand slogan, which BTC Paris and Havas came up 
with a couple of years ago now, I think. And I like it for a number of reasons. It's true to the brand and the product, and it speaks to and about the state of the world all at once. Um, that's quite a lot going on in just three words. It's also a call to action, an inspirational and aspirational call to action, a motivating one too. It's got an ownable word in there. I always like brands to have words that they own in their copy. So build um, is one of their words, obviously, because you're always building the, the Lego bricks. Um, and the three words are scientifically proven to be more effective and believable um, in a line. For some reason, four or more can reverse an initially positive um, impression, which is probably why so many other slogans are, in, are written in threes as well. So yeah, I'll go with Legos rebuild the world. That's really fabulous. Thank you so much. And and I, I really appreciate all of you sharing the reasons why as well. But I think that's really important for folks to be able to see. Um, that point of relatability is is just wonderful. So thank you very much. Appreciate all of you. Vicky, if I could carry on um, with the next uh, question. Um, and I, 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 it's funny because we've been speaking about ads and copy, but I suspect a lot of this will be then reflected in you as professionals but i was curious what are the key skills that you feel make you personally a better writer um and practically if an attendee was going to try and pick up or improve on this skill for themselves uh how would they go about doing that um yeah can i just go back the, i think the reason we all gave reasons for the lines that we picked is because as professionals and i'm talking for everybody here it's not good enough to have a conversation like this where we just say we like or dislike something. There has to be a reason for uh, why we're writing. And then that's important to carry forward when we're trying to sell in our work to someone that's paying for it. Um, I think that's where we kind of lose our way a little bit, uh, our reputation as copywriters and non-copywriters thinking that anyone can write copy. That you know, If we don't have rationale and backup, um, we could lose an argument. Uh, but in answer to your question about skills, um, I think the skills, what was the question? What skills make me a, <laughs> make me a writer? Um, yeah, yeah. A writer. Um, I think I'm really nosy. <laughs> I just love to know things about things. So the more I know about something, the more um, easily and naturally I can write. Like I love getting invited into my client's head office and going around and and seeing what goes on behind closed doors um and I'm also and I hate this word but I'm really anal <laughs> um and I think the more anal that you are that you are the more pressure you put on yourself to pay attention to every single detail so your copy is always going to be as good as it can be like every word has to have a reason for being in there um, and everything has to be meaningful so without being nosy and without being anal I don't think you can um do the best job uh, hang on and like how does that like surface itself for you I mean you gave an example there where you were uh, sort of speaking about going to people's offices and stuff like that but if folks were like ah oh, you know what I'm I feel like I could level up on my curiosity or, or, or my nosiness uh, depending on how you want to sort of speak about it how does that show up for you and and well just with the client bit I, we can't always go to the office often we're working with just like a couple of pages in a brief and that's just never enough to go on so if we can have a conversation at the very least clients give away more than they realize if they're just casually chatting when they're when they're sitting focusing on what to put in a brief they can miss out loads of stuff that actually you would find really useful um but in terms of building your own curiosity i think as a creative we are all naturally curious um and and there's opportunities everywhere to be inspired it could be i always say this in in any interview so i'm sorry if anyone's heard this but it sounds like i'm going to have some big reveal now i'm really not but the poster at the dentist or the pizza menu that comes through the letterbox or the beckham documentary on netflix like anything that's got words in is going to inspire you um it might be some big amazing idea that you can't believe you hadn't thought of before or it might just be someone said a word in uh, a podcast that you think oh actually that word would be better than the one that I wrote this afternoon so I'm going to swap it out so always be looking always be listening always be watching um stop looking at your phone <laughs> uh, <laughs> take your headphones off get out into the world listen to what people are doing and saying in the pub uh, or at the supermarket um there might be 
a mum and a child in the supermarket having a conversation and you might overhear something that becomes the headline in an ad for Tesco, for example. Mm -hmm. I love that. I mean, Dave, I've heard you in the past and this is a conversation that you and I had. So when we were speaking about skills, like one of the ones which I can observe about you is that you're funny, you know, and and that's not uh, a revelation to anyone. But um, I've had the chat with you in the past where you sort of said that you're constantly looking around the world and making notes of things uh, that are happening and and stuff like that, very much in the spirit of what Vicky uh, was speaking about there. Is that similarly a skill set that you feel is important for you doing what you need to do that sort of curiosity or do you point it to something else oh sorry mate you're on uh you're on mute at the moment for that amateur hour i don't do these (laughs) i don't do these often enough do i only about only about once every other all the year um i'd echo everything vicky said there um in, in terms of kind of my approach I feel I sometimes feel like I have got an, a, a kind of an overtuned radar for like interesting stuff, or maybe not even interesting stuff. Stuff that like just captures my attention, because you know when we're on, we're all on our daily th- trudge through life, aren't we? Just getting on with our day. We've all got our to do lists. If something is interesting enough to stop me in my tracks and go, "Fucking hell, wow!" Like I'll read that. I'll stop and read that. I know that I, whatever's kind of forced me to stop and read it. If I kind of make a note of that, even just get my phone, I'll take a photo of it. Um, maybe I could use that approach in my own stuff. Like it's it's um it's climate or change climate season, they've called it on channel four. I don't know if anyone's seen on channel four. Um, they've got an advert um all about um you know, um like the, the big executives of oil companies just taking the piss when it comes to lecturing us all on um carbon footprints. So um they've got an advert last night where a load of it's like Start a load of executives sitting on the plane. Then all of a sudden, they pull their keck down and start twerking. And they've got their underpants out. And they've got big black stains in their underpants. And the line is, are those with power doing enough about their carbon skid mark? And I was like, like not only the visual, the visual was amazing. But ca- calling it a carbon skid mark instead of a carbon footprint, I was like, just that play on words and how they've kind of just flipped it. Like, just using something that's in, you know, a common phrase like that and just giving it something that really shocks you and stops you. I thought that's that's inspiration enough, something that I can use in, in, in a job in future. So definitely what Vicky said, keep your eyes and ears open at all times. For me, it's a bit of a curse, but it feels like there's no off switch at times. But yeah. I think it it, it it can be a good thing because sometimes when you're in those dark moments where it's like, Fucking hell, I've got to be next up at two o'clock tomorrow. But yeah, I'll come up with an idea because wow, you, you have that light bulb moment from something you may have seen three weeks ago. Um it yeah, it saves you in in the, the moments when you need them most. I love it. Thank you, mate. Um Eddie, I, I want to come to you uh, next because I want to uh get practical. So with the folks watching this there, I mean both Dave and Vicky are given amazing answers there. So like I, I feel like we have to move these conversations on too quickly sometimes and, and I never want to do that but equally I want to make sure that we give folks uh, the opportunity to to have a, a wide range of questions answered and so I wanted to ask you Eddie whether there's any rules of thumb that run through your mind uh, when you write uh, for example when I'm writing I always tend to write uh, I, I will write you um, instead of I so if I find myself catching I in the sentence I'll always try and switch that to a you. Like, are there any sort of tips, tricks, rules of thumb that you tend to integrate into your writing where you're like, yeah, those are the things that I'm always going to change, uh, mm-hmm. which will help folks upgrade their their copywriting? Mm-hmm. Yeah, good question. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think I think everything like goes back to, I'm like, I'm just in baby mode right now, you know? So everything <laughs> like kids, just like, oops, like, just it's everywhere for me right now. So like, I got advice early on about from my parents. They were like, well, if the kids are, um, you know, if the kids are uh, uh, upset, just see if they're like hungry or if they're sleepy. You know, it's one of those two things. And I think with writing, it's like the the analogy is like, well, is it, are they, you know, like, could you can make it better if you if you like focus on on these two things on like on like concision and clarity. So I always ask myself like, is this clear? Is this concise? 
you know, if it's clear, like I just, you just understand it. You're using, you know, little words, not big words. You're, 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 you know, it's, it's, you know, it just makes sense the first time you read it. If it's concise, you know, you're not using, you know, two or three words where one will do, you know, I'm, I'm always looking for, for those two things. Like, is it clear? Is it concise? If my kid's upset, I'm like, is she hungry or is she tired? If the sentence doesn't really make sense, or if I don't really like it, if I just get a bad feeling, I'm like, can I make it more clear? Can I make it more concise? You know, can I, is there, is there an opportunity for more brevity here? You know, so probably that. I love that. I mean, that, that spawns a second question in my mind, which is sort of what's your mindset when you're writing for folks? Because I, um, I sometimes re- really worry and I'm sure a lot of marketers will do the same that if I'm going to be writing something that it could be taken the wrong way, that people could assume bad intent when there wasn't any, you know, that I'd be writing and, and there's like a double meaning to something or not even a double meaning, but like something which could be considered positive or happy or even just against the grain could be taken in a bad way and for marketers that the result of that is probably quite dangerous because that's brand that's all that sort of stuff so is the solution that same thing is it clear is it concise or is there a different mindset that you have to have in mind when you're sort of trying to protect yourself against people um taking the wrong meaning from your writing um Um, well uh, you know i think right now it's really easy to you know, send a message out into the world and, and, um, and test it, you know, and just see if, uh, see if it lands the right way or not. Um, there's always going to be somebody that spins your words in a different way or takes them out of context or, you know, paints you in a, in a, in a picture that's not like, you know, it's not aligned with what you originally intended. You know, that's always going to happen probably. Um, but yeah, I think, um, I think, maybe the way to circumvent that is like to kind of like say it straight first, mm-hmm. you know, there's like the, the say it straight, then make it great uh, expression, you know, saying it straight. is just like be direct, you know, say what you mean to say on paper. And then it's kind of hard to misconstrue. Um, that's probably one way to, to avoid that situation. But then also you can just send out, uh, you know, instead of sending out your email to 50,000 people, you could just send it out to 5% of that, <laughs> you know, and, and, and see what happens. And, um, you know, if it, if it lands well, then send it to the rest. And if it doesn't, then, uh, make some adjustments. I love that. Thank you, mate. Uh, I really appreciate that. Um, Vicky, I, I felt like clear and concise was two really good sort of, uh, rules of thumb to, to have in mind that felt really powerful and, and actionable. I mean, do you likewise have, um, other rules that run through your mind, um, or other things that sort of, you make sure to come back to every time? Well, I think, it has to st- you have to start with the audience the audience has to come first you've got to be really in tune with them um and what they're into and what they're saying and what they're responding to um that kind of answers your your sort of query before about how do you make sure that everything sort of translates well mm-hmm. um i feel we have a real responsibility to our audience um we need to respect them and the things that they like uh, I feel it especially with the brands that I work for that are mostly big entertainment brands. Um, their audience are typically big fans of something, the football, um, movies. I love I said the football. I don't really <laughs> know. Um, movies. So, for example, I worked with IMAX this year and obviously Oppenheimer came out and I listened to loads of podcasts of like real fan chat about Christopher Nolan and uh, the film being made uh, especially for IMAX theatres and just why people love going. So you've just got to be really into the thing that you're writing about on behalf of the audience. And um, yeah, I mentioned listening to podcasts where they might be fanning out, but also they're on social media, these people. like There's this ongoing narrative that no one pays attention to what we say, but it's not true. On social media, people actively go and look for a brand and follow them and even respond to them or try and have a conversation with them. Um, And so like a free focus group, we can just look in the comments and see what people um, are saying, what words they're using, uh, what what posts they're liking. Um, The Christmas ad, the response to the Christmas ads over here at the moment, (laughs) pretty hilarious. I'm thinking of starting a Twitter feed. By the way, I'm still calling it Twitter. Um, I'm thinking of starting a Twitter feed where it's just people's comments 
um, on on the Christmas app. Like, sorry, going off topic really slightly, but this morning I saw the teaser for the John Lewis ad, and the clip is of a kid saying, "Can I have this?" And someone has replied saying, "Can you please edit this so that he says please? Otherwise, what manners are we teaching children?" <laughs> in a- God, go away, <laughs> but not go away because we need to see what they're saying. <laughs> no, bang on. I absolutely love it. Though. No, thank you. No, it's so, so important. So <laughs> blooming important. Um, Dave, I'll, I'll come to you and, and maybe I'll, I'll prompt as well. Like if you've got any tips, uh, but then also conversely, if you see some folks making some regular mistakes. Um, so like what are the key mistakes that you're seeing folks make uh, most regularly? Um, I guess I should probably put a, a swear warning in for Dave. There's there's a counter going on in the chat. So, uh, so. <laughs> I'll unmute myself first. I did actually I did actually swear off um, you know while I was muted then. So keep the swear keep the swear counter for a minute. I'm sorry, sorry I'm a scally, but you're just gonna have to put up with me. Um, what was the question? Mistakes. Um, I've got, I've got two biggies that I see. Number one is it kind of runs on from what Vicky was just saying um, about putting yourself in the reader's shoes. I think far too many um, people, not only on social, does brands do it as well? Brand, brands can't be the worst. Well, they take for granted that people will care about what they're saying, about what you write. Unless people are fans of your brand, like Vicky said, um, say Nike, they've got fans. They've got fans who will you know, click like and share and buzz off you regardless of what you put out there. But for the most part, if you don't include some kind of, you know, emotion like humour or empathy or excitement or even fear, some brands use, you're in danger of, of losing people and people will just switch off. Um, it's not true of all brands. You know, you've got, you've got like really niche brands like, you know, digital camera brands who they'll have fans who will buy absolutely anything from them. They'll be obsessed with the features. But like when Apple bring new products out, they can kind of get away with it a little bit um, without having to, um, you know, go be- the, the, the classic benefits before um, features. But um, yeah, stop stop taking it for granted. Um, whenever I write stuff, I make sure every sentence works hard for this keep. I never think, oh, I'll just write that. You know, that'll be fine. Or I'll get the headline right. People will find a way to the call to action. They won't, whether it's a play on words or alliteration or making little asides where you put stuff in brackets or asterisks or whatever I do, making up words, you know, overly long hyphens, even down to the micro copy. It's all about getting people to that call to action or at least getting to the point where, um, you know, the, the, the message has landed. So that's that's the first one. Just just don't ever take it for granted that people are going to read your stuff. Um, and then the second one is... is you, you'll see it yourself. Or you'll certainly like the last last few weeks, Halloween, it's coming off the Black Friday now, squeezing <laughs> a million and one messages into an email. So much of bad writing comes from a place of okay, we need to convey A, B, C, D, E, F, and it's just like just convey A in a really interesting way, and you'll win. Like you'll stand out like head and shoulders above everybody else. So, um, so they're my two biggies. Nice, thank you, mate. I, I really appreciate that. I mean. Eddie, I'll, I'll come back to you on this because you made the point about being concise. And and so something I have observed in the past is like when I'm trying to be concise, I almost take the soul out of what I'm trying to write. You know, I almost take too many words out or, or trying to edit. So how how do you start to begin that process of like making it soulful or emotional, uh, as Dave's just pointed out, while still retaining, you know, getting there in the in the in the quickest possible way is that just experience and, and time or is is there some things that folks can sort of start applying themselves sorry mate i think you're on mute too <laughs> sorry <laughs> hey, what say? um yeah i i don't know i don't know that i don't know that taking the words out does take the soul out maybe i just Maybe I'm not with you there on the premise. Like, I think that, you know, just like in that, just like in that Regal Shiva said, like there weren't a lot of words in each one of those sentences necessarily. Like he wasn't going into great detail about his dad dancing in the kitchen with a tea towel around his waist, you know, but it was, it was, uh, it was just a very vivid image. And as long as, um, the people that are reading your copy, as long as your market, your audience 
um, can see that image and relate to it, then um, it carries weight. You know, so like back to what Vicky said, it's like, you know, know your market, know, know who you're writing for and put something in front of them that they can relate to and understand. So I don't know that like uh, concision and brevity and, and you know, tapering down your word count necessarily takes the soul out of your writing. Um, I think putting something in front of somebody that, you know, they don't inherently care about, um, then, you know, that 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 probably does more damage than uh, than than editing for. Uh, for brevity, I guess. Nice. Uh, I guess maybe it also um, links into your second principle that you shared earlier about clarity. And and so perhaps the thing I was guilty of in the past, I say as a novice writer rather than a professional, is is um, removing the clarity uh, in, in place of brevity. Um, and so, you know, that's... Um, it's well, here's good... the thing about... Sorry, I mean... No, go for it. I think, I think with clarity, it's like sometimes you can you can get people started. Like you can push the stone and get it rolling and let the reader imagine for themselves. And then that creates the clearest image of all, you know? And sometimes the less you say, the more holes you create in your writing and the more opportunity you give people to fill it in for themselves, you know? So like going back to that ad, you know, he's talking about, um, he's talking about his dad dancing in the kitchen with his, you know, with the, with the towel around his waist, or he's talking about his dad, you know, with, a, you know, the, the, the cutout from the newspaper in his wallet, like there isn't a lot of detail there, but you're giving the audience a chance to imagine their own dad or themselves uh, doing something similar. And that is like the ultimate clarity because they have that picture in their mind already, you know? So like, I think that's, that's, the, that's the counter to like, Oh, you know, you have to have a lot of words in that sentence for it to be clear. Not, not necessarily. I think. No, makes sense, mate. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And and on the note of appreciation, I can see eighteen open questions right now from the community. So I want to make sure that we get to those. Um, the big thing that I can ask uh, the community is, uh, if you want to give a thumbs up to any questions that you like in the Q and A feature, then we'll make sure that we prioritize them. Some have hopefully been answered as we've gone on. So um, if there are still where you're like. Ah, that's not been answered yet then then by all means give it a um a thumbs up and i think this probably the the most present question uh for this point of time is sort of gravitated to the top so vicky uh it's about chat gpt um which is uh i saw the the visible the, the visible shaking <laughs> of 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 emotion there so uh the question says how do you keep your creativity shining uh, with tools like chat GPT around uh, who can do a lot of the work for you. And I, I guess it's, that's a very specific question, but we can definitely broaden this out because this is probably the biggest question I would say at the moment for copywriters, but also marketers in general is about how AI is changing our job. Um, so I would love your your feeling on AI, but also making sure that we're, we're using these tools appropriately uh, to get the best results. Or not, indeed. <laughs> I don't know where to start. I've got, I could start about this for an hour, but equally, I don't want to. Uh, also, I've been so mindful of swearing, but Dave's here and Dave's broken the seal. So, fuck AI. I'm so fucking annoyed by AI. I'm annoyed by the chat about AI. I'm annoyed about people thinking that it's got anything over. Just fuck it all. <laughs> so fucking annoying um I might have just broken a record um my mum will be so proud um okay um the reason I'm annoyed firstly is because I think that the conversations around AI uh within the industry publications uh, the industry press is insane why are they not defending creatives? Why are they not supporting and celebrating creativity? Why are headlines running with things like AI is coming for our jobs? In the state of the world that we're in right now, sorry, I'm like yelling, sorry. <laughs> um, why are we putting this negativity out into the world? Um, people are being made redundant. We're losing clients, the budgets are tight. And for the industry press to be pushing it and promoting it for the sake of a, a, a 
news clickbait um, and shiny new toy story just fuck off um that's what i think about the chat about it all but how does it affect us all individually and personally i really i really truly believe and i don't want to seem ignorant because i am a massive technophobe i must caveat what i'm about to say with i can barely work a computer i only know how to work a word document um I just don't think it's got anything over true human creativity. It would, AI would never come up with rebuild the world for Lego. It just wouldn't, I don't believe it would. Um, AI has not experienced anything like a human has, so it can't tell hum human stories with real emotion like the Shiva's Regal advert. I could go on and on and on. Um, but the one thing I'll say, cause I can imagine people are going, yeah, yeah, that's all fine. But what about clients? Because they're, you know, they might use AI so they don't have to pay for a copywriter. Well, we don't want those clients then. They're the ones that don't value creativity and copywriting in the first place. Um, so you haven't lost them. They were already lost. So do all the things that we've been talking about and more. Stay, tre um, stay truly creative. Uh, write with meaning and um, emotion and also have fun with words. That is your superpower over a fucking robot. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> there is a lot of love for you uh, right now in the chat. Um, yeah, uh, we've got mic drop from Lewis. Uh, lots and lots and lots of capital letters, uh, but uh, very, very supportive of you right now, Vicky. So uh, thank you. Um, not least from Mr. Harland as well uh, in, in there. So uh, I just kind of want to give that a moment to to kind of sit. You know, because I, I think it's um, a good point. Absolutely. Well, well I need to calm down. So <laughs> no, no, not at all. <laughs> no, you, know, you know what? I, I, I've been feeling, and I'm sure everyone else is, that, um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of tough things in the world right now. And, and exactly to your point, the narrative isn't helping. Um, and, and um, you know, so I, I really appreciated that. And I know that a lot of people in the chat did. Uh, we've got Hannah just saying, do not calm down uh, in capital <laughs> letters as well. Uh, Dave, Eddie, I, I think Vicky said it wonderfully there. Um, but um, do you have anything to add at all? Uh, Dave, I know you've spoken a lot about this recently. So, um... Yeah, I mean, I, I've been taking pot shot to AI and the robots and the prompts since they came out last November. It's, um, yeah, every, every week I'm just taking a piss out of them. Um, you know what? For for the, the clients that want to use them, let them fill their boots with it because is that really the work? Decent, good copywriters and, and content writers, you know, they're the clients you want to be working with. Probably not. You can't really blame the clients for doing it. We're all, they're all, you know, everyone wants a fast track to the the quickest, cheapest solution, don't they? Let them do it. Let them let them be disappointed and come crawling back to us with the tail between the legs in six months' time when you know effectiveness is on its arse and they go, oh, we need some fucking writers to help us bail us out of this. That's what that's what will happen because if you look at the standard of what that those shitty robots produce. It's like compared with, um, you know, compared to uh, Eddie. Eddie wrote did a comparison the other the other month. Um, I think he did a, a prompt and um, described the birth of your your first child or something, and it spat out its usual, you know, hey robotic. Oh, I was in the labor room. Whatever robotic stuff it does. Eddie's Eddie wrote exactly the same word. He made me cry in what he wrote. It's just like there's the difference. Mm -hmm. Um. I think the danger in fast tracking anything with an AI prompt is that you miss all of that lived experience, the real, genuine, authentic stuff, like you know what a consumer or a customer has said about your product or how it feels to the touch. The little things that typing a prompt in would never, it wouldn't even know where to begin with that stuff. Like I, I had a, a client last year called Bramwell Brown, little niche brand you really unique stuff they make these um handmade clocks um they sent me out a sample of the product and when i got out the box it was like it was like that big i could barely pick it up it was this big hefty chunky thing i could feel the quality um so i wrote about like the, my process in my newsletter about how i work with the client to get this really like 60 words product description to get it absolutely word perfect and then 
sort of a bit of a laugh in my newsletter. I'll give the same prompt to ChatGPT. Um, and the line, I had to write it down because it's that shit. Um, I didn't even remember it. Um, be captivated by this clock's unique charm and impress your guests with its functionality. <laughs> I, re- I rest my case. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, man. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, we've got uh, folks enjoying that in the chat as well. Um Folks are also linking to uh, Eddie's post around this uh, from the other day, uh, sort of saying how wonderful it was. Um, so um, do you seek that in the chat as well, if you'd like to see it. Um, as we've spoken about AI, then I want to also mention, like, when is the time to bring in a copywriter? Because, um, say, for example, me, Joe Average, writer, et cetera, you know, I think it's one of the things that we often see with graphic design as an example, like folks feel like because I've got a Photoshop account and because I've got eyes and I think I'm tasteful, I should do graphic design. And I'm saying me when I've been told by numerous people that I should not do graphic design because I do a horrible job and stuff like that. So, Eddie, I just wanted to ask you, like, what's what's the tipping off point for bringing in a a, a copywriter for folks who are watching in might be a marketing manager in a in a business? Uh, who are like, you know what, now is the moment where I need probably some help or they're just trying to do it themselves. What's what's the best time to bring in copywriters? I mean, you know, when you want it to work, like mm. it, it's, it's, um, it's a nuanced discipline and craft and, and uh, there's stuff that um, there's stuff that like people that aren't in this, in this profession don't know. So if, if you want the benefit of that, um, bring in a copywriter. Um, but if you want to possibly miss some of those opportunities, then you could take a stab at it yourself and kind of go through that learning process and, and, um, and see what happens. Um, you know, it's like, I tried to stain my deck over the summer. I wish I would have hired somebody cause I, it sucks. I got to redo it. it. It was a huge waste of money and time and, my wife was mad at me and it, it was an embarrassment to my, like, it was, it was it just didn't work because I didn't know what I was doing. Um, I don't know. I don't know if copywriting is, is uh, like if you could equate it to staining a deck, but it's, it's a craft just like anything else. It just takes experience. So um, yeah, I think, I think if you have a, an important, if you have an important project, uh, and you want it, and you want to get it done, and you want it to work, then that's when you got to bring a copywriter in. Lovely, I love it. Thank you very much, mate. Let's um, let's do the last ten minutes on on community questions to make sure uh, that that we ask the ones. And and Eddie, I'll come to you first as well on this. So the first one comes from Emma, uh, Emma Louise Harvey, who says, uh, "Have you got any tips for learning slash improving writing skills when writing for a particular tone of voice?" Um, so. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll leave it at Emma's question. Yeah, I mean, for a particular tone of voice, um, copy working always always helps. I I talk about this all the time, and I feel like a broken record, but like it really is a helpful exercise. It helped me a lot. Um, copy work is is just taking a, a you know a piece of a piece of copy that um, or an ad that you really like and and transcribing it by hand. Um, and what that does is it, it kind of slows you down and it makes you notice the writing and notice some of the decision making that the copywriter made. Um, and it kind of hones you in on the cadence of the writing, the word choice, uh, all of the little things that are easy to kind of breeze by when you just read it. Um, so when you actually sit down and write it down by hand, um, it forces you to slow it down. It forces your brain to slow down uh, and notice those little things and, and absorb them better. So if you want to learn a, a particular tone of voice, that's probably an ideal exercise um, because, I mean, I'm not a tone of voice copywriter, but, um, you know, th- there's so all, there's all sorts of things that tone of voice copywriters do to, to uh, um, uh, you know, uh, create that effect. Um, I got a friend, Justin Blackman, excellent tone of voice copywriter. Um, he knows exactly what he's doing. Uh, you know, so 
I think of him when I think of like tone of voice. And I would, I would imagine that he would, he would tell somebody to go and copy work. You know? nice. I love that. Thank you, mate. I, to be honest, even that's interesting to hear it as a, as a relative lay person to this conversation, like even to know there's such a thing as a, a tone of voice copywriter versus a, a different kind. I'm probably showing myself uh, in a really bad light to a lot of the audience right now, but like, you know, even knowing that type of stuff is really interesting when it comes to seeking people out to help as well. So I really appreciate that. And I appreciate the tip as well. Um, Vicky, if I, if I could take the next question to you, um, it comes from Helen. So Helen asks, um, how do you get management to embrace more informal copy with a bit of an emotion uh, and stop being uh, corporate Normans uh, was, was Helen's, uh, uh, Helen's language uh, to describe uh, the folks in the company. I feel like I keep doing this and saying, can we just go back a step? But I yeah, probably, if we're going to call them Tony Voice copywriters, I suppose that's what I am. Right. Um, most of my job is creating a tone of voice for a brand. And I would echo what Eddie said about copying out work that already exists, because then you, all of the, for all of the reasons that Eddie said, but also you, you feel like you're already writing on behalf of the brand once you do that. And it helps you to keep on going as if, uh, like it's already in you so you can keep on going but also we need to get into the mind of that brand and that tone of voice so I always just immerse myself in anything that's going on um, around that brand or in the category so for example when I'm writing about the football that I mentioned earlier I know nothing about football so I will stand in the supermarket you don't even need to spend money you can just stand in the magazine aisle and flick through all the sports magazines and just note down the language that's going on in there um, and then bring that into the, your copy. Also, if the tone of voice already exists, just look out for those keywords, like I mentioned uh, with the Rebuild the World example from Lego, because if the brand already has um, words and phrases that it owns, then sprinkling them into your copy will make it feel like it's in line with the tone of voice, even if not every single word is. Now to answer the question that you came to me with. Um, I think whenever we're um, asking people to get on board with what we've written uh, or we're coming up against negativity and pushback, we have to present, this is where I get dramatic, we have to present our case as if we're lawyers. Um, we're talking to people who aren't coming from the same place as us. So we have to prove to them why what we think works works over what they think works works. Um, mm -hmm. And it might be that you have to put a case together and put some work in and provide some rationale and some stats if you can. Like system one is a great place to look for um, results from advertising and, and lines that work. Um, so you could come to your client or your manager and say, um, you know, this word worked because it caused a reaction and created a 59% turn and uplift. I can't talk in numbers. So anyway, if you can dazzle your whoever you're speaking to with some science, then they'll think that there's actually a real reason behind why you've written what you've written, which most of the time you have, but a lot of the time, you know, it's just innate, it comes out and you can't explain why. Um, also do a do and do, like a, a before and after. So do what your client or your boss has asked you to do, but then present that alongside what you think is better and hope that they see the difference. Sorry, I've just seen a comment come up that says best beard in the game. And I'm hoping that's not at me. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, uh, what was I saying? <laughs> um, totally what, thrown be me. Before and after. <laughs> before and after, thank you. Oh, yeah, you won't win every argument. So, yeah, get like just be comfortable with the fact that you won't win every argument. I once worked with a client who got really excited about writing her own copy for a full page press ad, and she showed it to me and she asked me what I thought. And I thought, I'm not, I know I'm not going to win this argument unless I talk in really technical terms. So, I started talking about grammar and past tense and present tense, because our copy was all over the place, um, and talked about punctuation and just things, language that wouldn't come naturally to her. And she looked at me and she looked back at this thing. I mean, she clearly just wanted to be able to say that she had a full page press ad that she'd written. And she just said, I still think it's okay. And so all I can say is, cool, go for it on your head, be it. Uh, so yeah, you won't win every argument, but at least you'll know you've tried. 100%. No, it's so important yeah, just to mirror and sort of take it out of the context of 
uh, this copywriting chat specifically, but we often hear this kind of advice from folks in all walks of marketing sort of professions is that, and, and non-marketing professions, you know, which is sometimes there is a moment where you just recognize that it's not a battle you can win. And, and then it becomes your choice to do what you need to do about it yourself. Um, um, but yeah, we've got Amy in the, uh, in the chat saying you're a more patient woman, uh, than I, Vicky, uh, and Amy is herself an excellent copywriter. And to your point about the before and after, then we've also got Harry Dry in the chat, who's the, the, the monarch of, um, before and after as well. So wait uh, a minute, hold on. What are we all doing? <laughs> Harry, <laughs> let him talk. We, we all need some time in the sunshine, don't we? So <laughs> I, I think this is, uh, I, I feel very exposed being the person asking questions here because there are so many wonderful uh, copywriters uh, in, in the chat right now uh, who I really admire. So uh, Harry just says, ha, shut up. Uh, so there we go. Um, let's uh, take the next one from David. As, uh, David. David. Wow. Shoot. <laughs> Getting very formal there. Sorry, mate. It must have been the question about formality. Sound like me, mum. <laughs> David. Um, <laughs> so uh the the question comes from hannah and, and I, I love it and hannah says can you share one writing exercise that you do to bring about copywriting inspiration when you have writer's block yeah there's this one um I've, I've spoke about it a couple of times before at the start of most almost every project um whatever it is that i'm writing about um a proper old school way i'll get me pad out and i'll split the page into four boxes um, it used to be called the Sire Method or the Rise because they're the initials. Which is a bit bo- Rise is a bit boring, so I started calling it Esir, E-S-I-R. Sounds like <laughs> a mystical Middle Eastern amulet or something. Um, and those initials stand for experiences, synonyms, um, idioms, and rhymes. So whatever I'm writing about, it, you know, it could be I've got a little hand fun here when it gets a bit toasty in this warehouse. Um, so whatever I'm writing about... Um, I write experience of it, experiences of it. So I'll be like, right, experience, hand fun. Uh, I've been on holiday, yeah? You fill them with water. I remember filling one with beer at an Oasis gig 20 years ago. And yeah, yeah, I remember this, this, this. And then I'll move on to um, ES synonyms. So other words for hand fun. Um, well, a tough one, isn't it? Um, air conditioning or things like that. So after, after doing this exercise, you'll then go on to idioms. So kind of common phrases around fans, Um and then the very last one rhymes so fan can lamb nan whatever you can do um and very quickly you go from having you know a blank page of absolute terror to almost um yeah a, a nice page full of um words and phrases that you can play around with 99% of the time it'll it'll kind of result in nothing um and you're better off speaking to customers and doing your research and, and put on the you know the hard yards in but um yeah when you when you're stuck for the starting point get get a load of words down that are related to what you're writing about um and yeah you can um you, you'll find that more often than not um a, a little little nugget might just might just appear somewhere further down the line so that's what i do love it thank you mate um i can't believe that we come to the close of the hour so i just wanted to ask one quick question uh before we go because i know that folks always benefit from resources and recommendations and people to follow uh, wait, wait joe 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 can we can we just before we go can we just plug uh because the, the question was where do you go for inspiration right 100 percent. you got to go to marketing examples.com <laughs> examples.com that I, I harry's in the chat uh those are two excellent resources that's actually where I do go uh, to kind of like fill up the tank. Um, he does an excellent job. So I think, uh, you know, he's here and he's created something really great. So I think it's important to to uh, to let, I think everybody probably already knows about it, but we should let people know that those are two great places to go to um, to fill up the tank and get, and get, and get started. Bang on. Absolutely. Harry's done a remarkable job and is a very lovely human as well. Um, Vicky, um, could I? Um, oh, well, see, Harry in the chat has now said go to Dave Trott's blog instead. So there you go. So he's humble as well. Um, Vicky, could we go to you for any recommendations of resources or folks to follow? Um, Steve Harrison's book, How to Write Better Copy, is 
one of the quickest and easiest reads. Um, copywriters write the best books because they're so good at writing conversationally. I read it in about two hours. Um, the DNAD copy book we mentioned right at the start from Eddie, um, uh, Harry Dry, Dan Nelkin. Um, I wish I could recommend women, um, but uh, there are a lot of men doing a lot of great things, so I don't want to not recommend them. Uh, Vicky Ross is is big capitals from Lewis in in in, in the chat. So <laughs> I know you wouldn't say that to yourself about yourself, but um, absolutely uh, to to follow you. I've really enjoyed following your content as well, Vicky and um, Dave. Uh, just to uh, finish off, yeah, Vicky will play it down, but I, and I know I, j- I joked about it in my my post about about Vicky and Eddie being luminaries, but Vicky, if you know if you're looking for any help within this industry, if you're just starting off. Or you're looking for some support. Vicky is um, so selfless in giving her time and energy and promoting um, our craft. And here's a craft. We're talking about AI here. This is a craft that you know. Um, once you get good at it, it, it it's a it's a it's a really amazing kind of, kind of field to be in. Um, and what Vicky does kind of constantly is just promote that and promote the virtues. And and um, she. Yeah, she's um, a shining light at the top of our industry. So everything Vicky does, follow me. I I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. Vicky is a um, um, she is she is like um, she's like an indus- in like an industry gem, and she, I like the anecdote that I wanted to share that I that I didn't know where to fit in, but I I want to share that when I started marketing very good copy in earnest, and I knew that you know it was a blog, it was content, I needed to get social proof. I reached out to a lot of people that I admired that I that I wanted to get their voices on the blog. And Vicky was the first one and the quickest one to immediately write me back, immediately give me the most amazing uh, testimonial that I did not deserve and was just extremely gracious. And like, that's all I see her doing. That's all I see her doing is is propping people up, supporting people, building this community. Um, and whenever I think about like how I, how I can, I always think about like how I can make people feel the way that Vicky made me feel that day, because it gave me a tremendous amount of confidence and it just bolstered everything that I was doing. And she didn't have to do that at all. Nobody knew what very good copy was or what I did or read my stuff. Uh, but you know, she just, she was just really gracious. And I think that that's a testament to her character and her personality and, and uh, what copywriting means to her and what copywriters mean to her. So I, we, we love you, Vicky. And we really thank you for, uh, for everything that you do. I, I can't handle this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not going to um, make you a talk now, but like, there's a reason why you have, uh a, a day named after you right so no. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the same thing so um so we've got claire in the chat saying accept the love and i'm gonna i'm gonna stop it there just because um i don't want to make you feel uh, awkward on camera here vicky um but honestly it's been a delight of a session thank you all three so much and thank you everyone in the chat as well for being incredible um like just a, a really wonderful session and i appreciate the three of you i appreciate everyone who's tuned in for making it truly special i hope you've taken something away uh from today i'm sure you have um please do take a moment uh to to thank our sponsors it means the reason why we can keep on bringing these sessions to you you get the follow-up with this with the recording with all that said um thank you for a brilliant hour uh, spent in the company of good people um thank you and have a lovely day everyone take care